What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, today we are continuing with the GTA 6 tutorial series and in this episode we will add some firing effects such as a muscle flash, an impact effect, a camera shake, some rifle sounds and some footstep also so we can bring our player alive. It is going to be a very easy video to follow so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is import some VFX. In this case, we are going to be using this free Epic Games asset from the Marketplace, which I will link in the description, which is called Infinity Blade Effects. So just add this to your library, and once you have it on your Epic Games library, we can just click Add to Project, and then we can search for GTA Tutorial Series, select it, and add it to the project. And now, we just need to wait a few seconds until it is imported to our project. Okay, once it has imported, you can see that we now we have a new folder, which uh, it is just named Infinity Blade Effects. And we have different effects on here that we can use in our series. Now, in this case, let's go ahead and make the muscle flash. So, what we're going to do is go to the player blueprint and add the, you know, muscle flash when we fire. So, let's go to blueprints, BP player, open this up, and in the previous episode, we made this system where we hold the left mouse button and we will, you know, execute this custom event and, and you know, do the line traces and so on. So right after we do the line traces, what we're going to do is do a spawn emitter attached, okay? So you will see that now we can access all of this new cool particle effects that we imported. Now, the thing is that if you're using Niagara for whatever reason, we would need to spawn a system attached. But in this case, this asset pack is not using the new Niagara system, it's using the old Cascade system. So that's why we need to use Spawn Emitter. But it's okay. So let's search for our effect, which is Muscle Flash. And you can see we have uh, different options. In this case, it will be the Pack Pack Muscle Flash. And now what we can do is attach this to a component. Where? Well, it will be our rifle component. So let's go ahead and drag it. Just copy and paste. And then the attached point name will be the same one that we used in the last episode which is this socket. If we take a look and double click on the scale of the mesh, we can open this up and there we go. It is this one right at the tip of the gun. That's where we are you know, spawning everything. So that's why we want to put it there. Then the location, we're gonna just copy and paste this, right? And it is gonna be very similar. The location will be this one and rotation this. And now if we take a look, we should see all of that happening. So if I take now my gun and start shooting, you'll see that, well, our muscle flash is appearing in the incorrect, you know, position, and also it is like huge. So first of all, let's make it smaller, maybe 0.2 will be a better option. So there we go, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and then the location type will actually be keep weld position. This is because, well, we are working with weld positions, not local positions. And now as you can see, it will look something better, but it still, it is a bit broken. That's because the location of the socket is not, you know, getting in basically correctly. So what we are going to actually do is create a new socket that we can adjust a bit better for our muzzle flash. So as you can see, uh, we already also have like a muzzle that we could use. So let's test this out. Uh, let's copy the name, paste it, paste it here too. And this should work better let's take a look all right q and boom that actually works great so actually that socket will work a bit better than we, the one that we used in the previous episode so let's also swap it by just adding the name on the other you know get socket transform node that we used in the last episode and now that is much better okay so yeah we are basically just you know changing the socket so it looks a bit nicer so for now let's also use disable the debug type for the line traits because well we want to be able to see a bit better you know all of our line traces and so on there we go and maybe 0.2 is a bit too small uh maybe we can increase it to 0.3 not too big but just a tiny bit right um and i think that this will be a bit better let's test this out oh yeah that's way better as you can see it looks really really cool okay so now with that said we have the muscle flash so let's make an impact effect right when we you know hit something in this case this will be with the you know line trace so let me go ahead and just make a sequence over here so we can have things more organized so if i add a sequence here yes as with the, the, the animation blueprint 
uh, one of the first episodes, we can just go ahead and drag this here and now it will do this and then execute this. And then I can have space to make all my code for the line tree. So if we have hit it something, the return value is true, we can get this out hit and break it. And now we have a lot of different parameters about the actor that we have hit it. So what we can do is get the impact point, right? So we can do a spawn um, emitter as location will be this time because we don't need to attach it to any, you know, actor or component. And now we can select the one that we want. In this case, we are going to search for troll death. Okay. And I know it sounds a bit weird, but it's going to be the troll death impact. Uh, and this actually looks pretty cool. So now if we get the uh, impact point, we can plug it there. And then we'll, for the rotation to make it always look outwards, we can get the normal and make rotation from X because X will be always the forward. So we can get this. So it will always um, go at the direction opposite to what we have collided with. And then the scale, we can play with that. And then also for pulling, okay, let's go ahead and put this on auto release for both of the emitters. So basically, you know, they will be a bit more optimized, right? They will reuse the same um, systems. Okay, so now with that said, in theory, we should be able to see some effects when we collide. So if now we wait until the shaders collide, there we go, we have it here. Now, it is absolutely huge. So let's maybe decrease this to also kind of 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and 0.3. You can play around with the values to get what you want and a more realistic effect. But I think that this will look a bit better. Yes, this actually looks pretty cool. Okay, so I'm happy with that. All right, so now we have all of the visual effects done except for one which is going to be the camera shake so i want to add some camera shake so when we you know fire with a rifle we'll get a better feedback right that we're actually firing so in the blueprints folder let's right click go to blueprint class and we can expand here to see all the classes and search for camera shake now we go down you will see this legacy camera shake that's the class that we want to select because we will have the basic things that we're gonna use for our camera shake. Let's name this something as PP underscore rifle fire camera shake. And let's open this up. So don't worry, we will not use any, you know, events on the graph. The only thing that will be changed will be its class defaults in the details panel. So the first thing that would change is the oscillation duration, which is, you know, the camera shake duration, pretty much. Let's put this something as 0.1 and leave the blend in and blend out time to be by default, which will be pretty quick, sharp, and, you know, it will, it will work. And then for the rotation, let's expand this and we could put some values, okay? For example, we could put an amplitude of 2 and a frequency of 10, right? We could put an amplitude 2, frequency of 10, and also for the other vector, two and ten and now when this will basically you know uh be played we will have some rotation camera shake with you know an amplitude of two and a frequency of ten and you can play around with the values to get what you want but in this case let's go and i'm gonna do it in the second pin where we play the visual effects so we can hide this already and just do a play weld camera shake node and now we can select the bp rifle camera shake um, class that we just selected and we can you know type an epicenter which will be the get actor location so it will apply that camera shake whenever our player is and then the outer radius we can put i don't know maybe like 500 right to you know go kind of far away so now let's try this out maybe you're going to play it around with the values but boom <laughs> we already <laughs> getting some camera shake and it's already looking pretty much like in gta but there's some things that we might need to change um you know first of all it's a bit too much so maybe we need to put this at you know one one on amplitude maybe in row we can leave it at two uh, to play around so let's see this out and that's a bit better you can see it's like faster um and i like it a bit more and maybe we can also increase a bit the frequency right maybe on here we can go more like 20 20 and maybe in here we can go with like 30 right and we can make it a bit more frequent. So let's go ahead and check that out. And oh yeah, this looks way better. As you can see, it creates a more realistic effect with our camera. And you know, it looks way nicer. Maybe, you know, we can go with 0 0.7, 0 0.7, and on here just 1.2 maybe, um, to make it a bit less noticeable in terms of amplitude. And I think that this looks 
a bit better, honestly. Uh, you know, we can maybe a bit more like 0.8 and 0.8. But this at this point is just playing around. You can see how uh, you know it's making a difference with the camera shake, and I really like this. And you know, it looks pretty nice. So we, you know, as the series go, we'll improve the camera shake, of course. Now, I think I'm going to make is go to the characters folder, go to animations, uh, go to rifle, and on the uh, equip where it's the rifle animation let's make this two on raised scale because right now it is very slow and i want you know to grab the animation a bit faster because it honestly was taking so much time so now for our delays that we had initially here it will be half of the time because well it is playing at a double speed so 0.5 will work and now you know we get the gun way faster and hide it way faster which ha oh, it is so good okay so as you can see this is already working there's only two things that we need to do and it's add the sound so the rifle sound and the footstep sound so let's go ahead and do that in this case we don't have a folder so let's right click create a new folder and this will be our audio folder and then here we will import everything so let's go ahead and do so Okay, so again, I will be leaving two links in the description with the rifle fire audio and the concrete footstep audio. So let's select both, drag them to the content browser, and now we have them here. Now, maybe in my recording, you might not hear them a lot, but, you know, because I have my mic higher, but you can kind of hear it, right? So what we need to do is improve them um on you know and, and make them the less repetitive as possible how can we do this well a trick that we can do is each time that we play it randomly change slightly the pitch so we will have the illusion that it is a different sound but it's actually the same one just changing the bit so for this what we can do is create a new audio meta sound so let's name this something as ms underscore footstep right and let's open this up and now on here we have our own graph. Now I do have a beginner tutorial on meta sounds. If you want, you can check that out. But basically, we want to play a wave player mono. Okay. And now we can just select a simple, you know, wave asset. So let's select the first step. And now we will connect the output to the output and the unfinished to unfinished. And now we can play the first step as it is. Okay, you might not hear a lot in recording again, but uh, it's, it's working. So, what we need to do is randomly, with a random float, change this pitch at time. So, we can just go ahead and put a range of maybe minus 3 and 3. Now, if you know, you test it out, you can see that each time that we played will be different. So, let's add this first step so, you know, every time that we walk, we will hear it. So, for that, let's go into the character animations locomotion go um into jogging and let's add it here so what we need to do is play close attention to where our foot touches the ground which is kind of here so in the notify section we can add things such as a play sound notify so we right click go and select this go with ms footstep now make sure you're selecting the meta sound that is the one that will have the variation let's select this copy go to the next one and boom right over here let's click on here and paste and that's pretty much it that's working great and now let's close this and also the camera shake and now let's go to the rifle locomotion and do the same but for the jog with the rifle okay so again play you know close attention and it'll be something as here select paste and also here paste now it doesn't have to be exact but you know the more accurate the more realistic it's gonna play so if you want you can be a bit more you know exact and specific but for me i think that this will work right as it is great so with that said let's close and now i can press play and you can see that i'm here in the first step so everything is working now, one thing that I want to do before we advance is make the sound 3D. Because later on, when we have enemies and civilians and they play their own footsteps, well, we will be hearing all of them like they're like next to our ear. And we don't want that. We want only to hear them when they're close to us. So for this, let's go back to the audio folder, right click, go into audio, and create a sound attenuation. 
with this we can create 3d audio so let's go ahead and name this as a as sound attenuation and then something as character because we will add this sound attenuation to all of our characters okay so there we go if i know how to type and the two values that we're going to play around is going to be the inner radius and the fall distance the inner radius is the minimum uh distance to you know play it into the so 200 will work if we're instead of the range of 200 we will hear it into deep and then the max that we can hear will be around 2000 okay uh you know so we have some distance and now in our menace sound we can go into source sound and uh sorry attenuation and assign it and now we'll you know hear it in 3d now of course because our character is right in front of our camera we will not really tell any difference but later on we will Okay, so now we need to do the fire. So let me do exactly the same what we did with the first step. Basically create a new meta sound source, right? If you want, you can just duplicate that one and, you know, change the um, the file to be the rifle fire. So as a challenge, I want you right now to pause the video, give it a go, create a new meta sound source with exactly the same setup that we did with the first step. But in, in, instead of being the first step, it will be the rifle fire. If you want, you can even duplicate it however you want. So pause the video and give it a go. Okay, so let's select the MS first step, duplicate it, and let's rename this to be MS underscore rifle fire. Let's open this up. As you can see, it just contains the random float with a range of minus three and three, and then a wave player, which we only need to go here and change it to be the rifle fire. And we can even leave the attenuation here because, well, we want to also play in 3D. So that's it. Now we just need to call this rifle fire which it looks really cool uh you know when we fire so let's go to the player blueprint go down and when we have all of our vfx i am going to add a play sound at location because i want this to be in 3d node and what i don't know what to do is go and find the ms rifle fire once again the meta sound make sure it's the meta sound because we want the variation of the pitch and then the location will will be again the get actual location so we can just copy and paste it and now if i go ahead and press play equip my rifle and shoot oh there we go oh it's so cool huh? oh there we go so of course you can change and play around with the volume with the random pitch uh, values and so on but i think that this is looking very very cool and we already have something going on so that's it guys if you found this tutorial helpful i would really appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to my channel remember that you have access to the project files through patreon or youtube members join my discord server to talk with me and other devs check out my new course with game dev tv on how to make a full stealth game and real engine 5 follow me on my socials and now yes with all i said bye bye